Bonjour. <laughs> well, I'm the uh, only American here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, I want to start first by talking a little bit about my history and how I got started in the media business. When I was 14 years old, uh, I had a dream of creating television at 14. So what I used to do was I would get into the basement of my house and we would create these magic shows for my parents. And the magic shows would be a box, um, my brothers and sisters, and we'd do these disappearing acts and we would collect money from my parents from doing these magic shows. <laughs> and we kept doing that until eventually they caught on that we were doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> But um, I think the interesting thing for me about where I grew up, I grew up in a place called Trenton, not Trenton Can in Canada, but Trenton, New Jersey, which is seven hours south of here, past New York and New Jersey. In my town, it's 225% higher crime rate than the rest of the United States. So it was a pretty dangerous city. Um, also, I'm a black American, and <laughs> if you didn't know. 10% uh, <laughs> of us were incarcerated or behind bars. Another 50% are unemployed. So, you know, it's important for me to hear people talk about perception, right? Because perception is what the rest of the world see based upon the media and what the media creates. And that's one of the motivations and main reasons why I'm in media was to change the perception of not just black Americans, but all Americans. I think it's important. And we're not just, you know, rappers or musicians or athletes. Um, and the most important thing for me, for you guys to realize, is that I want to talk a little bit about how to find and live your purpose. Now, I talked about a little bit about how I started at 14, finding a vision of myself producing movies from watching Star Wars and doing magic shows in my basement. When you find and live your purpose, it's really that one thing that wakes you up in the morning, that you think about at night, it's your dream that you follow. And that's what success is for me, is finding your purpose. There's a statement that says that we're all born into purpose. We're just flesh, but we are manifest flesh into purpose. And whatever you do in your life, whatever you wake up to do, is that purpose. And really the key for us every day is waking up and being aligned with your purpose. And the other thing that is important for me to, to tell you guys about is to challenge your belief systems. There's belief systems that we have in place. I told you a couple. There's perceptions around our belief systems. One belief system is that, you know, in America... Um, you know, we're arrogant. <laughs> that, may, that may be true. <laughs> Confident, uh, you know, uh, Canadians are polite, eh? So that's what we hear. And I think that for us is to, re to challenge your, your belief system because your belief systems are those things that sort of keep you tied to uh, your way of life. There's an example in India of an uh, elephant tied to a twig, if you guys don't know the story. An elephant in India, when he's a baby, he's tied to a twig. And that twig represents uh, a, a chain. So when the elephant grows up, the twig represents something that's stronger than an actual chain for that elephant, because the elephant can't break the twig because of the strength of the chain. So in other words, the elephant can break a whole tree and take the tree away, but can't break the twig because of the, the perception that he's created around that one twig. Choose empowering beliefs. Um, beliefs are so important. Beliefs are, you know, how you communicate to yourself, the stories that you give yourself to go on in life, the things that sort of separate you from the pack. Beliefs that I told myself when I was growing up was that even though I went to this high school that was ranked 317 out of 321 high schools in my state, 
that that high school wasn't going to define me or who I was in, in my life. So my belief system wasn't attached to my high school. My belief system was attached to who I was. And I think that that was a very important thing. When I graduated from college, um, my first job was at NBC. And my first internship was with uh, Bill Gates and with Microsoft and with, N and with Jack Welch at NBC at that time. So I can go from this high school that was ranked 317 to working for probably one of the most smartest and wealthiest persons on the planet. So it's all perception. If I believe the perception of what was told about me in the high school or in the media, I wouldn't have believed any of that was possible. So challenge your belief systems. That's the most important thing. Also, be aware of your emotions. You know, emotions are like the sea. They, they rise, they flow, and you're never aware of them. I mean, I remember one time I had an opportunity with a job, and, you know, I, I'll give you a better story. In sixth grade, <laughs> It was, it was my sixth grade graduation, and the teacher had selected everybody for this sixth grade play before our graduation. And I get up to my teacher, I'm like, you're not going to put me in the play? I've been sitting this whole time, I'm like one of your best students, I can't get in the play? She was like, well, Anthony, I had the principal role for you, but since you couldn't wait, now you're not going to be in the play. See? So it was my emotions that took over that situation and didn't allow me to get in the play. So I haven't spoken to that teacher since. <laughs> <laughs> Practice positive affirmations, right? They say that affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion, right? Affirmations without discipline is the beginning of delusion. But affirmations with discipline is the beginning of miracles. So if you have an affirmation, you get up every morning and say something to yourself, and you don't put it into action. For example, I want to lose 50 pounds today. I'm going to write it on the wall. I'm going to see it, but I'm not going to have any actions. You'll gain 60 pounds, right? Because there's no discipline to the affirmation that you're putting out into the universe. The most important thing for us when it comes to affirmations is to believe our affirmations, to change your belief system to actually believe the affirmation that you're putting out into the universe. That's key. The other thing is to understand that everything changes. Even though I had a level of success early on in life, by the age of 24, 25, uh, I was homeless. And the reason being was I wasn't attached to the opportunity or the job that I had at NBC. I wanted to go out and to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to carpe diem, seize the day, and do all those different things. And I took a risk. And that risk was to walk away from everything, to figure it out. And how I got back on my feet was I had a dollar and fifty left in my pocket, enough for a train ride to a job interview in New York City at a company called PBS. And I went to PBS, and I didn't tell them my situation. I sold myself based upon my affirmation, based upon the belief I had in myself as a producer. And on the train ride home, by the time I got back to New Jersey, there was a, a, a message on my voicemail saying that I got the opportunity to work with the company. So believe in your affirmation. Believe in what it is you set yourself out to do. Siobhan talked about this earlier, but detach from perceived outcome. I work in Hollywood. <laughs> that should explain number one. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about it. You have to be detached from a perceived outcome. We see a thousand scripts, TV pilot pitches every day. You know, I've... Um, had the good fortune of uh, also um, running a, a company called Bad Boy uh, with Puffy, Sean Puffy Combs' company. And I created most of his television uh, platforms. 
And the thing that I've learned from creating television is that when you detach yourself from a perceived outcome, that means that you're not attached to the opportunity of that show making it on the air. You're actually buying into the fact that you're doing this out of passion. And outcome is really based upon a monetary gain. It's based on finances. And that can't be the motivation for what it is you do. It could be one of the motivations, but it can't be the key motivation. Relinquish judgment, because everybody's going to have a perception of you. Everyone has a perception. You know, take, for example, a flower. We look at a flower, we see a beautiful flower. You know, it's pretty, it smells good. And then the bumblebee looks at the flower with infrared eyes, so all he sees is nectar. He doesn't see the flower that you see, so it's all his perception. So understand how perception works and that no matter what you do, people are going to have different perceptions no matter what. Change how you communicate. Communication is key, right? A good example. You may tell me, you know what, Anthony, you're a failure. That doesn't matter, right, what you tell me. What matters is what I say to myself. If I say, you know, he told me, you know what, maybe I am a failure. And I just walk away and I take that and accept that as my truth. But if you tell me that I'm a failure, it's up to me to communicate the message that I want to receive. That I don't accept that. I know that my value is greater than what it is that you perceive me to be. So make sure that you have your own communication happening within yourself. That's the key. Um, then like the reed in the storm. You know, the reed is very pliable, flexible tree, right? It can move with any storm. And you go to Miami, um, you'll see the palm trees. They have whirlwinds, uh, storms, uh, and a lot of times you see the trees bend nearly to the ground and touch the ground. And then when the storm is over, the trees are back up, you know, and that's us in life. You know, life will be full of obstacles, and what we're talking about with success is not avoiding obstacles, because obstacles will always be there, no matter how successful you are. If it's not one thing, it'll be something else. But as they say in, uh, sorry to quote the military, but is to adapt and to adjust. You have to adapt and adjust to every situation that's presented to you in life. You have to be able to adapt and adjust to every situation that's put forth in your life, because you're going to face challenges. And you know, I don't think we're talking about avoiding those, but we're talking about how to perceive those challenges as they're presented to you in your life. Then how to communicate to yourself when those challenges arise. That's the most important thing. I wrote this one here by itself because I think this is so important. Um, I, I feel like I bear witness to this, that conditions do not determine your destiny. Your decisions do, Right? Even though you may uh, grow up in an in a impoverished environment and not have the uh, best support system in terms of schooling or education, you have to make the decision within yourself that you're going to make a change in your life, make a change in the society. And really, it's not about the individual. You know, we are not in the world, but the world is in us. And when we look at life that way, we really have a unique perspective in terms of how we receive a message and how we deliver a message. But if you look at success as something that's based on individual achievement, then you'll never ever reach a fulfillment of your intended desire. Right now, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, philosophy that I came up with based upon working in film for about 15 to 20 years. And it's based on uh, a perception that uh, I live by, um, that Nietzsche said. Uh, he who has found a why to live can deal with it almost any how. Right? You have to first find your why. Like, ask yourself when you leave, what's my why? Why am I here? You know, um, people are here every day. We, most of our motivation is finances and money and achievement, but that's not a big enough why. Because you'll have that and you'll still be unhappy. 
So I was in a, a screening room, and I was looking at the projectionist or the projector, and I came up with this, uh, this concept of the projector. And the projector sort of represents the human being or the subconscious mind, the automaton that sort of occupies this, this, this spirit, this soul. And that's us. We're the projector, right? We look out into the world and we project the, from the real. And what's a real? A real is your history, it's your experiences, it's your belief systems, it's everything that you create in your life. That's your real. So everybody has a real. They have a room in their subconscious mind that has about a thousand reels in it. And every morning you wake up, you put a different reel on, and you go out and you project that to the world. And then you have the projectionist. Who's the projectionist? The projectionist is your brain, right? That's the one that's going and grabbing those reels and putting it on your actual projector and projecting that image, projecting that message. So obviously you have to retrain your brain to put the right message on that reel to what you project out to life, right? And then I thought, well, what's the ultimate? And that's the illusion, right? So every day you project 30, 40, 50 different illusions. You guys all will probably meet each other, and your interaction with each other will be different com compared to your own notes, your own personal experience, your own belief systems, your own ideas. You may talk to your friends differently than you talk to your mother. Then you talk to your boyfriend, then you talk to your girlfriend. So there's all these different projections that you're sending out into the world. So the key is separating yourself from the illusion and understanding that the real you is that projector. Right? And when you tap into that projector and you're able to understand that the projector is not the illusion, then you have a true understanding of what you're actually putting out into the universe. And that projector is what's going to separate you from... Uh, the confusion of your perceived success. Because success, a lot of times, is based on the illusions that we create. I live in Hollywood, Los Angeles, and I see a lot of this every day, the illusions. And the illusions are, you meet someone and they'll say, well, I'm an actor. And I usually ask, well, which res restaurant do you work at? Because that's, you know, most of Hollywood is. But I think the key is, is really understanding that, understanding your true calling, your true uh, purpose of being here, because that's going to really set you apart from, you know, people who are not finding their way. You know, you don't want to be like a ship without a sail or that has no, a navigator with no map. And your map is to separate from the illusion and to tap into the projector that's within you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.